Okay, time for a quick YouTube, I mean, Cool Dude Clems electronic YouTube video, um, no. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Welcome to Cool Dude Clems Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Just doing a quick one here with my old camera because, well, it's just more convenient. Anyway, before you, you see the charger for my bike. Well, my bike battery. Which has gone kaputski. Plug this in earlier to charge the battery. Completely dead. There's a light on the other side that should light up green when the battery's charged and red when the battery's charging. It didn't even come on. So this is my temporary solution for charging the battery. I have my power supply connected to the battery through this diode so the battery cannot backfeed into the power supply. And to limit the current, I've got these two light bulbs, which are progressively getting dimmer as the battery gets more and more charged. Also, I'm measuring the voltage across the battery on my voltmeter, and when this gets to about 42 volts, I'll know the battery's charged. It's a lot slower than using the designated charger for this battery, but in maybe a decade or two, this battery will be fully charged. So apparently this is capable of 42 volts and 2 amps. Which, if my calculations are correct, that's about 84 watts. And I seriously doubt that this is capable of 84 watts output. I think that's a little bit optimistic. I'd be surprised if it could do even half of that. Or half of that, depending on which way you like to say it. Also, gotta like the chinglish here. High Voltag inside. Don't open the enclosure. Indoor use only, not water. Away from the heat source in use. It's almost poetic. I've managed to crack this open, so let's take a look inside. I haven't actually seen inside it for myself yet, but... What? Are you kidding me? Is that all that's in it? Yeah, look at that. There's almost nothing in it. No wonder it's so light. So let's see if we can see what's failed in here. At least they've actually used a switch mode power supply. Surprised they're not using a capacitive dropper. You know, Chinese electronics. You know, I don't even think they've got a um, inrush limiter on this. And is this what's providing that 84 or so watts of power? This tiny little switch mode I see I assume it does have some parts on the back. That's not all that's in it, surely. Okay. Well, that looks a little more populated. I'll say this for them. At least they've got good clearage between the high voltage and low voltage side. I don't see any interference suppression capacitor. And that was very, very stupid of me what I did, did just then. Because I don't know how long that capacitor will hold a charge for. Yeah, I'm just going to take a closer look at the other side of the circuit board. See if I can see any obvious defects. Okay, so, not much on the other side either. So we got our mains coming in. Full bridge rectifier. Going straight into a capacitor. Yeah, no inrush limiting whatsoever. This appears to be an LM358 op amp. Or at least, when I look through this lens, that's what I saw. And this resistor here looks a little how you doing. I know it's not... You're not going to be able to see that on the camera. It's a 100 ohm resistor here that got a little divot in it. I'm not sure if it came like that from the factory or something's happened to it. Just going to probe across some of these components and see if there's continuity. Let's see, is there any continuity across the output? No, that's completely open. Just going to probe that resistor, see if that's alright. Should be 100 ohms. And no, that's completely open as well. My probes are working, aren't they? Yeah. Probes have continuity. This resistor doesn't appear to... Is that all that's wrong with it? Just that one resistor? I said that looks a bit dodgy. My diagnosis is that just couldn't handle the current and just went... Well, oh, if that's all that's wrong with it, that's going to be an easy fix. And there we go. Looks a little hairy, I know, but I don't have any 100 ohm resistors, so I just had to improvise. If it blows that... I'd be surprised. You know, there's another thing. Although they've got a good um, uh, gap there, 
I've forgotten the word. They've skimped on just about everything else. There's no inrush protection. And they don't even have the interference suppression capacitor. It's no wonder this thing throws out so much interference. And I'm not exactly sure how this regulates because there doesn't appear to be any feedback to the high voltage side, so I'm guessing this op amp is in control of regulating the current on the output side, but a little tiny surface mount I see, is that really what's handling all that current? I don't see any other transistors or anything, so I hope that's okay because replacing surface mount components is not something I'm very good at. Well, let's plug this in, see if anything happens. Hopefully nothing will go bang. Don't think it will. There's no reason for it to, but uh, we'll see. Do we have a light? Still no light. I think this is going to require. I think this is going to require some further investigation. Like, is the power supply doing anything? Well, we've got a single rectification diode, so I'm going to probe that and see if there's any voltage coming out. Well, let's see if any voltage comes out of this thing. Well, we do have 42 volts. If I could just get that to stay in there. Well, it is outputting voltage. But why is this little LED not coming on? That's the question. Let's make sure nothing's getting hot. And yes, I did unplug it. The lock amp feels warm. I think that might need replacing as well. Well, I'm going to have to admit defeat on this because I'm pretty sure this chip is also Kaputsky and as it's a surface mount chip that's just too small for me to work with. So yeah, either I'm going to have to come up with a new charger or somehow miraculously get this one to work again, but at least my temporary means of charging the battery is working. I think this battery is almost all the way charged because these bulbs are barely glowing at all. In fact, I don't even think the camera can see that. 41.3 volts. Well, it's not what I would call completely charged, but... Yep, that's enough for a trip or two. 